Today, we're gonna to put together an easy shed, three meter by three meter by 2.42 meter, uh, and we're gonna compare it to other brands. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back. Today I'm with my good friend Joseph Suka from Intellect Finance. Hey guys. Now just recently he purchased a flat pack shed, uh, an easy shed, three meter by three meter by 2.42 meter high. And um, I suggested that we assemble a shed together, um, basically so I can compare his shed to the shed that I put up recently, the Absco shed. And now we did discover that um, there are some pluses and some minuses with this particular shed, and we'd like to share that with you. So come with us as we assemble this shed. Okay, so we're ready to go. We've read the instructions. This shed is a little bit different to the Absco shed. So the Easy Shed does not have pre-drilled holes. So you have to uh, mark out your holes uh, and you have to screw all the way around the framework. A little bit more time consuming, um, but it looks fairly easy. If you can grab that. Allow the bottom cutout to sit on the base. And so now we'll grab the sheeting. They're, they're 2.1s. It doesn't matter which way you overlap your sheeting, whether it's uh, uh, left or right. Just place that in and just keep creeping it in. Yep. That's it, and push it all the way in. That's it. All right, so now we've got this uh, wall together. So we are starting from the, the rear wall uh, and uh, there's only one of this size. So we've done that. The edges of the sheet have to be flush with the U-channels. So you've got to bring them flush. So I would suggest that you screw both ends in first and then come in and bring your screws. So these are just a Phillips head number two self-drilling screw. Make sure before you screw it in that the channel is hard up against the sheeting and it's flush on the side. Then I'm going to come to the middle or to the joins of the sheets and do there and that way I'm going to ensure that they're evenly spaced between them. All right, so with these internal screws, you've just got to measure out 700 mil. I'm just going to go through and mark them all first, and that way I don't have to keep pulling out the measuring tape. Okay, so this wall is now complete. Uh, a little bit of a struggle, but not too bad. Going by the instructions, the next uh, thing to do is uh, to put the two side panels together. So I'll grab the bottom trim, and if you could just put that in place. These two are the ridge lines. All right, <clears throat> can you just grab the next one, please, Joe? Good. Let me just squeeze that in. Much easier way to do it. If you just push that into me a little bit, fantastic. Uh, let me just see where it's hitting. It's hitting right there. That's it. Okay, so before you go too far, what you've got to do, there's, a bit of, there's an overlap here of the sheeting as they're crossing over. So what you've got to do is just trim them off. Okay, so that the channel can sit in there. So you cut two sides. All right, so we've trimmed the edges. Now we just need to put the C channels in. So the channel 
uh, has a long side and a short side, so the long side sits on the base of the table. I'll place that trim into place. Okay, that's three metre and seven mil. Can we just double check from this end? Just on the, the, the white trim only? Yep. Yes, it's exactly three metre. So what that means um, is that these internal sheets need to be brought in a little bit. So what we do is just hold this bracket on the line of the, the channels, the C channels. So we do put in total six screws. Two of them we'll have to put from this side, then take back out, and then drill from the other side. That's better. Okay, so once I've drilled that one through, I then take the drill to the other side and drill back the other way. Fortunately, there's no other way of doing that. The reason you do that because the screws will poke out on the other side and probably doesn't look that great. Okay, so that's in. So the two side panels are now complete uh, and now we're going to do the two roof sections. All right. Definitely better to do this shed with two people. Uh, this would be almost impossible on your own, I think. Uh, you probably could do it if you knew, if you're experienced. Um, but as a one-timer, uh, yeah, you would need someone to help you. All right. Just a little bit of pressure on me. All right, so that channel is just a little bit too far. So while Joseph's putting those ones in, uh, he's nearly finished. Uh, I'll put these barge cappings on either end uh, and this is for waterproofing the shed. All right, we'll just carry it out there. Okay, so before we go any further, uh, we've finished the second panel of the roof. Uh, what we're gonna do is put the ridge capping on now and we'll stitch it in. That's it. Uh, this is the outside. So what we've gotta do is turn this sheet, this whole panel, yeah. upside down. Okay. <sighs> so what we do now, you'll see that this uh, ridge capping has a roll formed uh, hat section and now that hat section just slips into this U channel this C section so we'll do we'll just slip that in now and that fits in nicely very good just just slips it in beautifully all right so what you do is you after putting the ridge cap in you push it in as hard as you can against that U channel the C channel push it in hard and you screw it in uh, from the ends and then every second ridge Done. All right, so there's only one thing I've missed off. We'll turn this back around. So this does actually have plastic on it. It is far easier to take this off now than later. Done. All right, thanks, Joe. All right, so this one is now complete. We've taken the plastic off. Uh, we'll just transfer it over to where the other one is. 
Okay, we're up to the stage of putting the doors together. We've already set up the channels. Uh, so the side channels for with the hinges, they are facing up because we are doing the uh, external facing part of the door. So they face upwards. So they, in other words, when you lift the hinge up, they are in the air. Uh, the first door on the left is a U channel. So that'll be to the left side. And to the right side is the Z flashing. So it's uh, a little bit different. So you've got to make sure that you do the right one. And you've got to get the sizes right. So this is the 2040, uh, which is the door size. All right, so Joe, if you can pass me one of those uh, sheets and we'll start putting this thing together. But top and bottom first. Yeah, because they're the ones that are going to be hard to get in, as we've discovered. Then place the channels in. Now, instead of trying to squeeze one channel into the other channel, you place one on top. So in the channel, it will sit in like this. If I can explain it, it will sit in this way. So don't try to squeeze it in this way. To sit in that way. So one thing I noticed with these instructions, they're diagram based. There's not that much information on how to put this together. So you probably need some prior knowledge before putting this together, um, but don't let that put you off. Uh, it just means that you just got to be a little vigilant when you're doing it. Uh, just make sure you've got the right component before you start screwing. So just use your measuring tape to confirm that. All right, so now we'll just screw in the sides. Done. So it shows, yeah, on the hinge end, just uh, come in, uh, put three screws. So it's just one in the center, I think it is. Even though this sits on the other side, I'm just using it only as a reference. So 2-0, that's it, center point there. So, sorry, Joe. So what I'm gonna do is just put a screw there and there. So that way it will miss the latch that comes through Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just place two screws on this end here just to secure it a bit. That is now complete, so we can put that one just out of the way. Done. Just in the center. So what I'm doing now is just putting the padlock uh, uh, cover on. So this, this flashing is actually uh, what holds the lock in place. So uh, it's in the center of the door. And also when I've screwed the plate on, then I screw the padlock on and the padlock just sits hard up against the C channel. Okay, so this is the last stage. We're now just gonna put the front panel together. Uh, and once we put the two side sheets in and put all the uh, jam section together, then we'll then uh, put the doors in place and we'll just finish that off. If you look at the rib pattern, the two smaller ribs go closer to the door. So the large rib goes to the outside. Okay. All right, that is really good. Okay, so now we'll set these up and we'll do the same for the other one. So the Z flashing is now sitting up against the sheet. Uh, yep, that's it. All right, so now these channels, uh, so the U channels, the C channels, uh, it sits in, so that creates our width. We don't need to estimate, we don't need to do anything else. Okay, so we just finished this last one off. So basically we've just created the jam for the doors to sit on, so that was pretty quick and easy. So let's lift that over, so allow the hinge to fall over. So again, the hinges, this is how it sits, so that just sits over. So they've given you 20 millimeter clearance. So you just basically come off around about 10 mil from either side and that'll be enough. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, so the hinges are now in. So all we've got to do is put the cross brace. Okay, so what I've done with the cross brace, I basically have put, first of all, the section that's crushed, which is uh, the rolled edge, uh, I've left on top. And the bottom section, which has just a raw metal, I've placed it on the sheeting. The reason being, you can cut yourself on that. Here, the rolled edge, you, you'll be uh, protected from being cut. Uh, so what you've got to do is put the screws from this side uh, and then take those screws back out uh, and, and re-screw from the opposite side. Okay, so we're running out of time. So we've just put all the walls up and we've put the stitching screws on the side, put four each corner. And, um, and so now we're just gonna put the roof on. You grab it. Yep, and you come inside and you keep that, you keep that. So both of you work together. That cabin that you can see here, look yeah. right. Joe, on your left, yeah. uh, on your, yeah, yeah. in front of you. Uh, that's gonna sit over the wall. So um, we'll be right Yep. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Lift it up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the last minute we decided to put silicon around the parameter uh, because the concrete is uneven and has a lot of contours and a lot of gaps. Uh, so we want to stop the water from coming in uh, in large volumes. Okay guys, the shed is finally complete and it looks good. The only problem I had with it was the instructions and the labeling was insufficient. Uh, if you haven't got prior knowledge of putting a shed up, uh, it's probably gonna be hard to put up. Um, Joe, what did you think? Um, I love the shed, it's strong, steady. I love the height, but I would have struggled putting it together by myself. It would have taken me about a week, I think. And that's a shame. So um, hopefully this video does help. Uh, so I do have another video out called Absco Sheds and it turned out pretty good. It was a long video, but it will help you because it's a similar type of shed. Um, anyway, that's the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed the content and uh, if you do like this kind of uh, content, if you could please consider to subscribe and to hit the like button. Thanks guys, I'll see you on the next one.